Good evening and welcome to the school committee meeting of September 9th, 2020. As we start every meeting, I'd like to remind you this meeting is being broadcast live and also being recorded for use at a further date, so please keep that in consideration. This meeting is being held fully remotely in accordance with the Governor of Massachusetts March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, small c30a section 20. This meeting will now be at a live broadcast on WHCA and WHCA TV and online. <clears throat> okay, I'd ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'd also ask you to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Before we open the agenda, I'm gonna take some stuff out of order. And just so everyone knows, I've had a hearing aid for two days. I've already broke it. So please speak up this evening so I can hear you. What? <laughs> it, was a, it was a learning experience. You can't step on that $900 thing. But, so anyway, I'm going to take the WHE Memorandum of Understanding out of order, and it's going into executive session. We will be voting it and coming out of executive session and then going right through the full meeting. So we, we will not be adjourning. We will be coming out of executive session and then having the regular meeting. So, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. David. Present. Chris. Yes. Yes. Mike. Dan. Yes. yes. Bob. Yes. yes. Dawn. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Steve, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Yes. And we're back live, ladies and gentlemen. So again, welcome to the September 9th, 2020 meeting. For those of you that weren't watching the very beginning, we had an executive session. We have since come out. Now we're going to be doing our regular meeting. I'd entertain a motion to pass over the August 6, 2020 minutes. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. David, you're abstaining? Yeah. Okay. I'd entertain a motion to accept the August 26, 2020 minutes. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Superintendent's report? Uh, sure, I, I didn't know if you wanted to take the MOU out of order, Chair Hayes. I will take the MOU out of order. I entertain a motion to accept the memorandum of understanding from WHEA and the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Thank you. Um, now we can go to superintendent's report. Thanks. Thank you for voting that, uh, that MOU. Uh, it goes right into updates on reopening school. Uh, we've had the opportunity today. We took a facilities tour with members of the school committee. Um, I hope folks were able to see what the classrooms look like. Uh, much different uh, size wise. Uh, an average classroom had between 11 and 15 desks, uh, 15 at, at most. Um, across the district, you are able to see some of the signage that's out there, making sure kids are safe, uh, that teachers are safe. You'll, you saw some panther paws outside of Whitman Middle School. Uh, principals and staff have been super creative to help kids along the way to reacclimate them to what our new normal is right now, uh, coming into school next, next Tuesday. Um, I want to acknowledge there was a tremendous, there's still tremendous anxiety from parents, from staff, uh, from administrators on what it's going to look like. Um, but we, we, set, we set out to do something we thought was impossible. We're pretty, pretty damn close to being there. Uh, we have a good game plan. Uh, principals and teachers are implementing that game plan. I can't speak more highly of the staff that have been in since the 27th and the work they've put in to make sure that they have their kids back. Um, every teacher I saw over the past couple days, um, you can see it in their eyes, although you can't see their smile but their eyes are gleaming, waiting for kids to come back. And we hope the kids come back with that same excitement um, 
to see their to see their teachers. Um, one thing I want to add, uh, it's it's not. I'm going to get it out on social media today. I have a. Uh, I'm going to do a parent Zoom with the school nurses tomorrow at 11 o'clock. For some reason, I couldn't access my social media this afternoon, because I want to just say it here. But uh, Nurse Tobin, myself, and a couple other school nurses will be on Zoom to answer parent health-related questions, what the nurse's office is going to look like, kind of what we did on Fox 25, but more Q&A for, for parents. Um, today, um, all the schools pre-K to 8 uh, released class lists. So there was much a buzz about who has who, um, which teacher, uh, you have, remember it's cohort A and cohort B. We have 386 students on full remote at this point. Um, that, that was the last update I got at about one o'clock this afternoon. And our homeschooling went up from about 17 to, what are we, close to 90? Close to 90 students are now being homeschooled uh, by parent choice for this year. Uh, most of the homeschool requests have come through Georgia myself with a caveat above it saying, this was a hard decision for us to make. It has nothing against the Whitman Hanson School District, but it's a matter of convenience or necessity at the home for childcare, and they can't wait to get back in our system next year. It wasn't a, hey, look, we don't like what you're doing. Um, this is what we're, where we're at. But it has been, and I understand um, with both parents working and cohorts and, and things like that, um, that students have moved to homeschool. Um, I think we're ready to go. Bus lists will be out either tomorrow or Friday. Transportation has been a challenge, uh, as you can imagine, with only putting 23 students on a bus and then some fluctuations in cohorts. It's been a, it's been a real issue for us, but Karen Villanueva has done a great job at trying to put together the best opportunities for students. Um, I can't tell you how many cohort changes we had since last Friday. Um, a lot of parents did ask, and the principals tried to do their best. Um, the challenge, this year, like no other, was whenever a student moved in or a student wanted to change a class, we could add an additional desk in the corner. We could put an extra kid in at 23 or 24. I can't now, and, and it's hard, and I know some people aren't happy. Some parents aren't happy that we weren't able to make the cohort change, but the principals did the best they could uh, for, their, for the students in their building, for the parents in their building and um, we tried to accommodate as many as possible. Therein lied, in, lied the problem by making cohort changes up until last week. Um, transportation had to work round the clock overtime to try to put kids on buses after cohort changes. So we did the best we could um, in the situation that we had. I apologize for the parents that aren't happy, but again, it was, it was our, our best efforts to put something forward. Um, I don't know if Kevin wanted to mention anything about the MOU. Yeah, I'd love to bring him up. So. Sure. Hi, everybody. I uh, just want to say thank you for the committee, obviously, for help moving us forward during this uh, uh, difficult time. And certainly thanks to the administration for assisting in the process. Uh, this is definitely a, a collaboration. It's a good um, kind of baseline, good place to start. And we know certainly as, as things come up, uh, we'll have to revisit them as, uh, you know, pretty much every other committee and, and leadership will do. But uh, we're uh, um, feel good and excited about uh, moving forward and uh, uh, look forward to uh, beginning, believe it or not, the uh, negotiations process in the uh, in the fall with you folks so uh, uh, thanks again and uh, you know uh, ready to uh, have at it as far as uh, school so thank you thank you Cindy Kevin thank you both for all your efforts we we know that there's a lot going on and there's been a lot going on in the district so I think on behalf of everyone in this room I can speak for them we're very pleased that you guys worked through this and put all that hard work into it to get it done so thank you uh, everyone Anyone? We're good? Okay, thank you. Just to finish up, our, our plans are in place. I sent out a letter to, to families on Friday updating what remote looks like, what hybrid looks like. I'm transitioning th those questions now to the building level principals. They sent out their newsletters or their updates today. Um, if parents have questions around hybrid, what does that look like? It's all out there. It's all out on the web for us. We will still facilitate questions as we go forward. Once we get into school, I'm sure there's going to be more at the district level and at the building base level, but I'd like to uh, not step on principal's toes because each one of them has their own system of how things are going, bathrooms, hallways, lunches. Um, we, we gave them the autonomy to build their culture or build their plans around their school culture, and I think they've done a nice job. Um, 
So uh, if people have questions, sure, jo George and I are always available to answer as many emails as possible, but the building principals have it now um, and we'll be transitioning and, and there's gonna be virtual open houses. Um, principals are, are scheduling those and getting information out to their families. I know Duval's doing a, a kindergarten thing uh, with kindergartens vir virtually as a welcome, I think on Friday. Uh, the PTOs have stepped up. So I think, again, we're, we're ready to go. Ernie's done a great job with facilities. It still doesn't look as polished as, as I'd like it to be for Tuesday, but we're pretty close. Uh, and kids will be here at 7.05, uh, cohort A, starting school Tuesday morning. For anyone, that, before we go to questions, for anyone um, that's having issues, I'm getting text. If you go to whca.tv, you might, if for anyone that's having problems seeing this meeting, that might be the issue. I'm getting answers from the people doing it saying the streaming's right and the cable connections are good. So, again, if you're having problems, go to whca.tv. I'm sorry, continue. Questions? My update on that. Questions? Yep. Thanks for the tour today. Lots of hardworking staff out there. Um, I'm sure we don't want to talk about what might happen if we need to close, but can you talk about in your interaction with Board of Health and what might trigger and what metrics we might be looking at? So sure, so I actually had a Zoom with the Board of Health last week uh, and I asked them for any assistance uh, in making decisions if we, if we spike to red or if a building has, has an issue. Desi has actually, and you've, you've seen the governor, there's, there's a, a, almost like a SWAT team to come down if you have to triage a building. But I've asked boards, both boards of health to give me information if they're seeing escalations in, in either parts or either town. Um, so we have an idea, and I used a, an example of if you see Stop and Shop in Whitman have an escalation of employees. Uh, we have students and parents that work there, so put me on notice so we can track that. Um, they've been very amenable to giving me as much information as they have. Uh, come to find out the MassGov dot website that shows the, the colors in the, in the metrics of, of how it comes out, that's how they get their information. I thought they had a special bat channel that they would call down from MassDPH, not so much. But they also told me if, the, if we had any questions to confirm with MassDPH. Um, the reason we escalated Lisa Tobin to be our COVID nurse is she, uh, she's on the phone with MassDPH every day. So we will get information from MassDPH, regulate it or, or give it out to both boards of health. And then I ask them to help me bring a decision to either this committee or, or if we have to move, if a town is in red, what does that mean? Um, and how long do we have to track that before we actually shut school? So we're in those conversations now. We haven't set anything in stone. Uh, what I did say kind of off the record was if we do move to red and we do move to remote, it won't be a day to day. It would be at least, you know, 10 school days, maybe 15 school days, so that parents wouldn't have to say, oh, wow, we're in red and, and, and Jeff called off school to go full remote on Wednesday and Friday we'll be back in, in yellow and we'll go to hybrid. I wanna give parents the opportunity if they have to make daycare arrangements um, to make those for, for a couple of weeks. Um, and I think the, the both boards of health agreed that that wasn't, uh, that wasn't a bad idea. So you weren't bouncing from red to, to, to full remote, back to hybrid because of the numbers and, and how the numbers shift. Uh, one thing I was cautioned about was sometimes those numbers or those charts aren't necessarily accurate. Um, so that's why they want more information. Both, we had a safety team meeting with, the, with both fire departments and police department too. And they have an idea of where, where patients are um, and we'll work with them to know, not necessarily names, but where there might be clusters in the communities. So everybody's been really helpful with me uh, so that I'm not standing out alone making a call on school. Um, Jerry and Tim have been great. Timmy Hanlon and Mike and Mike Mix have been great. Uh, and both boards of health, I can't ask for, for better people and more responsive. And again, Lisa Tobin has been on point with them and uh, they've been very amenable for anything that I've asked them. Anyone else? Chris? Just to kind of piggyback on, on Don's question. So who ultimately would you be look would is this something that you would make the call in an emergency situation or we're expecting so, so group expecting this would be a committee decision? So what I would say is that I'm making the call after that and I, I would probably try to convene the school committee and let them know how long we'd be out for 
and or and or discussion or put it forward because I don't know if, if we'd have to post the meeting you know di depending on information you know I think it's a work in progress like that the one thing I would say is the one thing that Desi has said to us is if you need to make the call you make the call you inform your committee reconvene that committee as soon as you can because the other piece of that the committee has to decide whether or not believe it or not not necessarily come back to school but whether or not to participate in athletics because once we shut down this committee has the right to say we're not going to participate in athletics until we're in yellow or until we're in green or until we're in white so i my what i'd like to do with this committee is if we need to move on that say it's a thursday after the reports come out wednesday night if we are in red and and both boards of health on thursday morning or friday say our our best advice to you is to go full remote i would try to reconvene that meeting of a school committee meeting on monday or tuesday but you wouldn't wait no, I would, I would, and, that's, and that's Jesse's best practice yeah. in terms of what commissioners providing for guidance. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Hillary? Um, just a clarifying question. Is it, if there's a cluster in the Council on Aging in Whitman, for example, that doesn't necessarily mean that the schools would close. So we could be, one of the towns, Whitman or Hanson, could be in red, but if that cluster isn't doesn't that's what I'm led to believe we had a nursing home facility that's what I'm, left that's what I'm led to believe, to believe. <laughs> Correct. I just wanted to because I think looking at those maps if you look at the red you know like Quincy for example they're going remote because they are in the red but you know I think to say Whitman's in red or Hanson's in red that might not necessarily mean that we would go full remote that's what Correct. I've been hearing like Correct. The, you know so I think that that's an like depending on the population of who it's affecting. That's correct, because that was one of the questions that I did ask. And we, we asked Lisa Tobin, I said, what if you, if you have a nursing home in your, in your town and you have a high spike in that nursing home or that facility, does that count towards your numbers? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. So overall, yes, but you, have, you know where that cluster is. So is, it's not dissipating throughout the community. Is there a number for a school, like a percentage of positive cases within a school or the number of students in your school that Desi has said, if you have this percentage, you need to I haven't close. Seen that. Have you seen that? No, the only thing they've used is the metric based on the town, which is the, okay. yeah. I, I believe it's 0.5%. Yep. Well, I, I yep. might be wrong with the number, but they, they're applying the same metrics that they use to rank the number. That should be over here. They're applying the same, Desi's using the same metric numbers that they use in percentages for the towns as to the schools. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to go by. And then we, we respond with when we have that information with our local health officials so that Jeff ultimately, if he needs to make a decision, he does. Go on. And follow up to Hillary, if it were a case of maybe Duval School showing some positives, it, we would not be able to close down one school. This would be like a snow day where the entire district, you know, if power was out, can we close one school? I guess that's my question to you. I, I think we have the opportunity to do that. My concern would be, be if I close the school, the siblings are at the at the same house. So I might have a sibling at Whitman Middle School and at the <laughs> high school. Fair enough. Now I'm quarantining and, and, and how that happens. Yeah. So I think we look at that in that case. And again, okay, if we have a, a spike at one school, I'm going to say to the Board of Health, hey, give me some guidance here. What should we do? And we do our contact tracing. If it's, you know, I have five siblings at the high school or whatever, um, then we make that call. So, yeah, I think it can be case specific. Okay. Um, I'd prefer it not to be yeah. because it will throw off the, the school year, but we're going to do what's in the best interest of kids and their safety and making sure we, I will overstep to make sure kids are safe instead of understep. And I think this committee knows that from, from both of us. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer if you had to shut one, they all go down just to keep us in sync. Yep, that, that, that's and one of the goals. It makes it equitable across the, the whole district. Instead of having teachers still reporting for some and, and not others. It's like, you know, if you're going to have to kick one to remote, they all go remote to that said time. And that's, that's one of the things we did discuss, you know, if it's... Well, if one town spikes into red and it's and it's valid red, the district will go remote. It's not going to be because Hanson's in red and Whitman's in green. The district will close because we have so much crossover. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that on update? So moving to student handbooks, um, not a whole lot of change outside of the high school. Um, Dr. Jones made some changes. Uh, in the in the middle in the elementary it's more cosmetic but dr. Jones did make some changes I don't think uh, anything that he's asked for is unreasonable um, and, it, and again some of it is cosmetic 
um, but I would just ask the committee to, to review those and move them forward. We haven't made any, any major disciplinary changes, any real changes to graduation yet. That might happen, um, come, depending on how the school year runs out, if we have to reduce requirements, depending on if we're in a full remote situation, things like that. But right now, we're, our handbook is pretty, uh, all three handbooks are pretty benign to major changes for, for next year. Any further discussion before we move to vote to accept the student handbook, Mr. Small? Uh, should we wait where we're going to be revising the face covering policies? We could do that. I mean, I, again, I'm not, I'm not, the, the, the handbooks aren't crazy. We could, I could, we could, I don't know, Michelle, what do you think as far as, because we're just going to, I'm going to ask for a, a revision in the, in the district policy at, at some point to include bandanas uh, or exclude bandanas as a face cover. David? Oh, I was just going to ask, was there any handbook changes made at the elementary level? The, it was cosmetic, right? It was Where cosmetic. Was Yeah, that'd be great. It's right here. So I'm not sure, Fred. I mean, that is a valid point as far as that face covering piece. I mean, I don't know if we can amend that on the, on the fly. I mean, it's, it's not on the agenda, but, um, but it does involve our handbooks and our policy. So I'm comfortable with, with a, a motion to amend that policy. So. Anything that comes through, we can amend as it comes out. Correct, correct. I think we should probably, because we don't know how long, do you have any idea? Does anybody have any idea how long it could be before they come out with it? No. What? what? We're, I'm just going to make an amendment to the, uh, to the policy on face coverings based upon the MOU with the teacher. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this committee to re revise that policy to add bandanas as an exclusion as a face covering. We right can, I mean, we can make that motion right now. Mm -hmm. So somebody can do it. I can't do that. Yeah, and I'd make the motion that we uh, revise our district-wide policy on face coverings to exclude bandanas as uh, in the uh, memorandum of understanding. Are you seconding that, Don? Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So now it's just the handbook as, as you move forward that face covering policy has been has been amended for the district and now these these pieces are here. I would make a motion to approve the uh, handbook policies as presented with the new amended face covering policy language uh, added. Somebody second. want to second it? Second. Seconded by Dawn. Discussion? I do have Dawn. Jeff, can you comment on number four on the high school handbook? Yes, we're not going to do mid-year and finals this year. Okay. So, so one of the things that Dr. Jones has been working on, and um, I think it'd be a challenge right now, especially for our virtual learners, but he's been working on, since he's been here, uh, modifying mid-year and final exams and trying to do it more project-based or, or something uh, other than a standard you know, hour and a half written exam. Uh, we haven't been able to track progress on those um, as a benchmark or improve instruction based upon our mid-year or finals. Um, and our, our educationally, I, I believe that they have served their purpose unless we modify them to a point uh, where we can actually see and teachers can then modify instruction based upon the results of the mid-year and final. We found that, that kids, you know, your final exam, you might not even get it, and teachers aren't, are teachers working their tails off, but aren't really modifying instruction based on, on the assessment that was given at the mid-year or the final. And just to, add, to add to that, part of the, um, I guess, PD for teachers this year is really focusing on what's essential because of the lack of time we're going to have in front of students. And so exams, I, I don't, I'm not sure how it works at the high school, but at my school, it, it's about eight days of instruction that we lose. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really a, about what's important for the students. And so you can, just because we don't have exams, doesn't mean that the teachers can't give assessments to the students. They're right. still going to get 
you know, Correct. summative assessments and things like that. Um, but I think a lot of schools are probably moving in this direction this year, just because of the time. And you know, it's these kids are going to have enough to, and teachers are going to have enough to quality time. Deal over. With. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back when we were in full real education mode, one of the one of our colleagues uh, down in in uh, where's where's Brian in Swansea. Their final exam was called, high school kids had a, they called them their passion days. Mm -hmm. So you would, a teacher would facilitate pa something the kids were passionate about and the kids could go and explain that. Um, it was better culturally for the kids. Kids were able to learn from that and finish out the year on a, on a strong piece. Chris has talked about this. We modified the time frame because we used to lose eight hours, four half days of, you know, we lose tremendous instruction. We kept the assessment in, but modified the school day, so they were no longer half days. Um, but I think this is an opportunity for us to grow educationally for our kids and, and modify what is, what is a tradition, and we can modify it to make it a, a, a better opportunity for our kids to grow. Thank you. Any further discussion? I have a motion and a second. Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Thanks. Parent surveys, we sent out two different surveys. Um, that I want to talk to the committee about. Um, so one was a parent. You teach in another district but live in either Whitman and Hanson. We had 95 responses from uh, educators who live in both of our communities. And I'll break it down for you. Uh, 20 parents at Conley uh, were looking for some sort of uh, remote care. 19 parents from Duval were looking for some remote care. 15 from Hanson Middle School. Uh, 15 from Indian Head, 20 from Whitman Middle, and 6 from the Regional High School. So totaled 95. I didn't break them down by grade. I just broke them down by school. And we did have 49 uh, teacher responses, uh, actually a little bit more, but we have 49 students, uh, grades K to 8, that teachers in our district filled out the survey uh, it, for needing some remote care. I took away pre-K because we, I don't see any way possible if the committee said we were going to move forward that I could do remote care for pre-K students. Uh, we right now have five kindergartners, six first graders, seven second graders, three eighth graders, six fourth graders, 12 fifth graders, six sixth graders, and three seventh graders, and four eighth graders, totaling 57 students K to eight. Um, that um, teachers are looking for coverage for. I did not include the three ninth graders, the five tenth graders, the two eleventh graders, and the two twelfth graders. Um, I felt that, you know, I just took them off of those roles. If you want to add those, those can. But I don't know if a twelfth grader would want to sit here in the library because their mom wanted them to be here. <laughs> I think <laughs> we might have more of an issue with that. Mm -hmm. So those are the numbers. Uh, I'll be very honest right now. And, and if people followed my Twitter, uh, I'm short paraprofessionals right now, at least six, uh, to fulfill our remote needs uh, for the district. Uh, I've had a few, few interviews. I'm interviewing and George is interviewing because they're district-wide remote positions, and we've had some folks, you know, not show up for interviews. So I'm scraping. So if we were to add this, um, I could find a, a placement for those students, uh, but I don't have staff available right now. So I can't say to this committee, yeah, I'm ready to go if you approve this. I still have some reservations about being able to sustain a pro, not a program, because I wouldn't be putting students in a cohort. It would be a remote learning opportunity. And what I visualize is this. I would use the library at Conley Elementary for the Conley students, and I'd have to put a pair there. Uh, or we would con con contain the elementary Whitman students to either Conley or Duval, and I'd put a pair there. They'd have to, in my mind, visualize they bring their breakfast or their snack and their lunch. They don't really leave the library. They have their Chromebook or their iPad, and they're, they're working on their assignments from their cohort. If it's a teacher student who teaches in district, they would be working on whatever their teacher from their town assigned them. So I call it remote care not actual instruction, and it would be covered by a paraprofessional. And just to let the committee know again, I don't have any of those people right now. I'm still short for our own, for our own opening next week. That doesn't mean I won't be able to get those folks, but we are, we're a week away from opening and I'm still short. So 
and, and we wouldn't provide transportation either way to any, any, any of these folks. They'd have to get their students to the school that was designated. So that's what we have from the surveys. Uh, I, think, I think people filled them out diligently, um, but I'm, I'm open to questions or, or what, what say this committee. Michelle, um, I don't see a reason to vote those. You've said what they were. What are we voting to do? Uh, accept the survey? Well, I would be asking you to, to vote to allow, to open our buildings right now. Yeah. You, this committee voted to move in a hybrid direction and not an in-person learning. This committee drove us to how we are going to instruct our kids. Now you're, you would vote to allow me to add students to our building. Right now, we have a certain amount of students in our hybrid mode. We would be adding students to the, to the, uh, to the library, to the amount of students in the building, and also allowing me to hire more people um, that aren't necessarily in our budget right now. That's a, Chris, your first, Fred, second. That's a much different vote than talking about what the parent-teacher survey results were, I think. But Chris, yeah, go ahead. So, so I think um, in terms of direction, right, we talked about this in the last meeting in terms of seeing if there was something we could do to help both our employees within the district and folks within the community as a whole. So I think it's a noble, it would be nice to be able to do it. I think based upon what you described, I certainly have some concerns and they're not financial. I think if I'm just thinking of the students themselves, right, I don't think we'd be excited about having a student in a classroom for eight hours all day sitting there in front of a computer. Like, I just, that's, not, that's not what we're trying to do. And that would really be what we're building here. Um, so I really have some concerns there. And it just sounds like we have our hands full with what we need to do in this while it would be really nice to do is something that we're probably can't prioritize right now. I do think it might be something worth revisiting in the future. I don't know if there's something even more broader across the community. I was thinking about this last time. I think someone made the comment of, well, wait a second, we're prioritizing teachers. What about other municipal folks? And so I don't know. Maybe there's something a little more community-centric that we could do that just made your scope bigger. So, okay. <laughs> but, but, but not now, right? I think we got to get through opening. We've got to get through what we need yeah. to do. And, and maybe there's a way we could kind of do that because I still am concerned in terms of if we think of the communities of Whitman and Hanson and we have someone that's in a situation where they don't have appropriate childcare, it just don't, that doesn't make them feel good. So if there's something we can do, whether they work for the district, they work for Hanson, they work for Whitman, they just live in the towns, man, it would be nice to be able to support that. I just don't think now is unfortunately the time we can do it. My two cents, Bob. Mr. Small, um, and Mr. Cullen. Yeah, and and uh, echoing a lot of Chris Chris's sentiments, but also thinking things through a little bit more. Uh, what happens if a child is sick? They're not really in school, but yet we have nurses here. But you know, what do you do in that case in taking care of the child? Uh, you know, so you have that, and obviously. You got a parent, you know, and I'm talking about the students that live in district, but the parents teach elsewhere. Uh, you know, that's A that comes to mind. B is, you know, the fact that there are other first responders. You know, that, you know, it should be inclusive. Uh, C, coming up with the idea, I know you had mentioned that the Y was looking into space. Yes. Uh, I don't know if we have the quote unquote space that the Y could utilize and let them run a program that would be completely not on us, but the Y's program itself. Uh, I don't know what they charge. I'm sure it's a nominal fee. And they would be the professionals and it would be their programs, their protocols. We may have a say as to what they're allowed to do within the building, such as face mask coverings, hand coverings, etc. But, you know, maybe investigate something like that. Uh, and that could be inclusive to members of the whole town mm -hmm. as opposed to just one subsection. And we obviously want to do whatever we can for our teachers, and they're wonderful. But at the same time, it creates a class of haves and have-nots. And I just don't feel that's proper. Why has secured another facility? In fact, I don't know if you get that email today. Um, 
just uh, we'll we'll get this out again. But the First Congregational Church in Whitman is uh, is now a facility for the extended daycare for for the Y, and they're calling it the same thing, a remote learning platform. So, in district, I'm concerned about just space myself. You know, getting these numbers. I'm using, utilizing libraries without asking my principals what they're utilizing their libraries for. We don't have that space. I mean, right now the gym in the high school is cafeteria, and, and that's what people are using their extended space for. Um, so that would be a, a challenge for, for me to extend to the Y. The Y will be doing their morning and afternoon program, but they actually came up with alternative sites off campus so they could solidify their program. Um, so I, I, hear, I hear you. I have concerns about bringing folks in. Same thing with the sickness. We're going to have a, a, a school full. We've added additional staff, and now we're adding more kids to it. Um, and I do have a concern about just putting a para with, with 15 kids in front of a screen for six, or, for six hours or for a school day. When other kids are walking around the building doing their school day, and, and you know, Mr. Boyce has to sit there and just look at his screen all day. Um, that, is, that is a concern of mine. Our cohorts aren't built for some of the, the processes of other school districts. I will, I will use Situate as an example. They're doing a morning and an afternoon session. Um, so every kid is going half day in the morning or their afternoon cohort. They're working it out. I don't know if they have care, but it, their cohorts are different. Instead of the two days on and two days, three days off, those kids are going in, elementaries are going in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, I don't know if they're conducive to opening this. I, I used my town as a survey last time. Uh, we filled out the survey. I haven't gotten any response from the administration at Pembroke whether or not they're doing this or not. So school opens next week. I still don't have an answer. That's why I brought this to this committee before school opened to assist us or assist me in making a decision on where we go. I think this really is a school committee decision as I'm using funds that I don't necessarily have secured and building space that we didn't um, we didn't plan for. So. Dan? Mostly covered by Chris and Fred, uh, the remote care, but what you just hit on, we were on the budget. This isn't a budgeted item that we approved. Um, and we barely scraped together enough from both towns to get what we needed to get this year to go. To add on this, and then there's so many variables which they pointed out, you, you have other areas in the town um, that might be able to utilize something like this, but you know, I don't think we should be starting up something we barely keep our school going. Uh, we should concentrate on our own district and not babysitting services, basically. Because you're not going to have enough paraprofessionals, it looks like, to get this up and going, anyways. And there's a cost to that. Uh, Fred? I, I just don't see how in good conscience. I could vote for something knowing that you don't have the personnel to fulfill the obligation. You don't, I mean, you're going to be scrambling to fulfill our normal obligations, never mind an additional obligation that we're not really prepared or equipped for. And I'll, I'll just add to that, if, if I do secure that and that person calls in six or quits, I'm, I'm behind the eight This is, we can do it, and I, I hear Mr. Howard said too, we can continue to investigate. I think that's okay. But right now, my biggest concern, and I think our biggest concern, and I share it for everybody in the district, is getting kids next Tuesday in and making sure that works because we haven't seen it yet. And I might be hiring additional staff because I need coverage somewhere else, and I'd hate to commit to something that I don't necessarily feel comfortable and we haven't planned for. We spent a lot of time, we spent since June planning opening. And this is something I, I'll be very honest, I'm not super comfortable doing uh, without a proper plan in place. So Jeff, do you feel com comfortable <laughs> letting school open and moving on to the next meeting to talk about this? We, you know, well, I, I can't have this now. I mean, I, I know I wanted to present the numbers. The committee asked me to investigate. I think we did our due diligence. But at this point, I feel pr telling the committee and feeling the vibe of the committee, we will not be providing remote care for any students. We'll continue to investigate and if I have additional data, I'll move forward at the next meeting and present you with additional data. Is that fair? Yes. Everybody okay there? That's yeah. Fair. Absolutely. In, okay. in the interim, you can obviously provide the why information to anybody. Yeah, we'll, well I, on my Friday afternoon, let's get ready for school. I'll send that out as well. But thank you for your assistance in that. Okay. You all set with that? Superintendent's evaluation. 
I have that in front of me, so I'm prepared. Okay, the superintendent's evaluation, the first step of it, it's the end of the cycle of <clears throat> summative evaluation report. Step one, assesses progress to goals. There are three different criteria in this particular position. Professional practice goal, five members say he met it, three say he exceeded it. Student learning goal, five members say he met it, three members said he exceeded it. District improvement goal, two members said significant progress, four members said he met, three members said he exceeded. <coughs> Excuse me. Step two is assesses, assessing performance on standards. Standard one, instructional leadership. One member said needs improvement, five said proficient, three said exemplary. Standard two, management and operations. One said needs improvement, five said proficient, three said exemplary. Standard three, family and community engagement. One member said needs improvement, two said proficient, six said exemplary. Standard four, professional culture. One said needs improvement, three said proficient, five said exemplary. Step three is the overall summative performance. One person said needs improvement, three said proficient, five said exemplary. I would like to remind you two previous school committee members filled this out because they were on the committee during the election year. So I'm just going to read through the comments because we have to do this in open meeting. One of the members said to suggest that this year had its challenges would be quite the understatement. Between the assessment methodology issue, the pandemic, and the budget challenges, Jeff and the district had their hands full. Considering these challenges, Jeff performed very well over the last year. Generally speaking, Jeff communicated well with staff, the school committee, and the public. He put the students first and prioritized their well-being as well, that of the staff and the community. He helped, us, he helped lead us through a challenging budget cycle. The transition to remote learning was not easy and required agile deployment and flexible leadership. Overall, this went well, despite the lack of lead time to build the plan. As we move forward, I'd like to see Jeff continue to maintain the prioritization of being the chief advocate for the students of Whitman Hanson. In addition, I would like to see him focus on improving the following. Building out the long-term strategic plan for Whitman Hanson Regional School District with a specific focus on creating a strong, stronger engagement with all stockholders. A sharp focus on remote learning and ensuring consistency of deployment to all students. Incorporating more real-time feedback from parents and using this to continue to optimize the remote learning process. To any extent possible, also using this feedback and as part of the evaluation process for district staff. Innovation, a continued focus on how we can move from the status quo and use the changes that have been thrust upon us to deliver the highest quality education program possible to the students of the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. I appreciate Jeff's perseverance through this year and his commitment to the district has not gone, gone unnoticed. Next one, comments. Management and operations were scored as proficient. However, I do feel there needs to be more communication with the facility subcommittee and this committee needs to meet no less than bi-monthly. Family communication is another area that while scored proficient, there is a concern. Going back to the original interview process, the search committee was told of regular coffee hours off-site that would be available to parents. I do not know how you can accomplish this in today's covert environment but as of 3.20, there was not a session held. Next member. This is in no way in this very extraordinary year to not give him the highest praise, recognition, and continued support to our superintendent and his whole team. He could not have been challenged more, and for all of his efforts, he has earned our greatest commendation. I am extremely grateful for Jeff and for absolutely everything he has done for us this past year. Thank you to the superintendent at the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Next member. Given all of the issues this past year present, presented, you did a wonderful job. 
no matter how many times you're asked to run numbers and new scenarios of what the budget was and what the budget would look like, you did so quickly and without complaint, and you have done a great job acknowledging teachers and staff for all their hard work and dedication. This is more than anything our previous superintendent did. Keep pushing to bring back programs. We had a lot of programs we need. Thank you for your care and having done and continue to do. It was a pleasure to work with you. Next member. In my nine years on the school committee, the past year has been so far the toughest for everyone, staff, students, parents, etc. In my opinion, Jeff has done an incredible job keeping everyone informed during the COVID as to what is going on, not just at Whitman Hanson, but also what the state is looking to try to do. As far as the budget goes, it has been a struggle for everyone, and Jeff, I believe, has done his best to keep us informed, answer questions, and on subject that seems to change on a subject that seems to change weekly. On a personal note, Jeff has a positive impact on students and parents. My oldest son holds him in highest regards because he is able to understand and listen to students. Their perception is their reality and listen to the students again. Finally, thank you to everyone from the school district. I have enjoyed my time working with all of you. I tried to be a voice of reason and hopefully I succeeded. Difficult times bring out the best in Jeff. I'm impressed with all of the hours and effort he has put in to open schools and with some sort of sanity in the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Jeff, 2019-2020 was not a great year for many, but you took it on with positive, positive, positivity and productiveness, coming up with a plan this year. I could not be more confident in you and your staff to keep our kids safe. Ladies and gentlemen, some are typed and some are handwritten. <laughs> and my glasses are, you know, getting a little foggy from this mask. <laughs> With the current COVID-19 issue making it very difficult to work on budget and other district issues, I know the superintendent has pulled in all directions and has to take on more serious issues to keep the district alive and its students and staff is safe while having to be in a lockdown. Also, the budget fiasco that had many people involved to come up with some sort of concession to avoid a possible state takeover, which would not have been ideal. Also having to deal with the legislators not coming up with any type of real numbers on time has also made this a difficult budget season. As for regional agreement, we need to finally get that completed once and for all. The state regulations regarding evaluation 603 CMR 35.00 Center Student Learning and Student Growth in the Evaluation of All Educators in Massachusetts. If we are not putting the needs of our students first, we are doing them a disservice. It shall be noted that this evaluation is being completed absent of a self-assessment provided by the superintendent using performance standards and rubrics data about student learning. Past progress on the district improvement plans and goals the prior year's evaluation, input from the administrative leadership team, and staff feedback. Because there was no self-assessment, Superintendent Simonak and the committee did not have a chance to identify focus indicators aligned to the goals, at least one from each standard, to focus on the focus the school committee's assessment on performance of the standards. Still, we must evaluate based on the approvals of the goals of the committee. To say this past year was filled with unexpected situations is an understatement. The first six months, September 19, September 2019 to February 2020, was consumed by an assessment methodology debated the latter five months, March 2020 to July 2020, by the ongoing assessment methodology debate and the unexpected school building closures as the result of COVID-19 pandemic. Under a normal year, the role of the superintendent is demanding. In a year of both the pandemic and budget crisis, the role is not only demanding, but requires a tremendous amount of flexibility, positivity, and focus to maintain the vision and mission of the district. For the first time in a very long time, a budget increase of 5.5% was approved by both towns using a modified statutory method of assessment based on aggregate wealth of the two member towns. While this was a monumental task led by Superintendent Simonak and, and, and accomplished that is one step in the right direction for the Whitman Hanson Regional School District. I have no doubt that this process must have consumed 99% of the superintendent's 
working hours and weekend hours due to phone calls, emails, and text messages from both sides of the Board of Selectmen, finance committees, town administrators. Unfortunately, sacrificing such an enormous amount of time to focus on one single issue can be detrimental when it takes away from the critical educational and administrative initiatives. Thus, many areas of this professional valuation have a rating of needs improvement. Fortunately, the lost time due to debating and assessment methodology should not be a factor going forward in FY22. The groundwork has been set for a statutory assessment method and a foundation for improved student learning has begun with the procurement of a district-wide math and ELA curriculum. And that finishes the evaluation. As you can see, everybody had a, a fairly uh, candid supply of things to say about what the superintendent has done. So having heard that, does anyone have any questions about this evaluation? David. Um, obviously, I'm new here, um, but I heard you mention something about the self-assessment, Bob. Was there other documents that were supposed to pertain to the superintendent evaluation, or was the, the superintendent supposed to assess himself beforehand? The evaluation has changed again. It used to be like a 25-page evaluation years back, and then they, they didn't, I, dumbing it down would probably be a poor analogy, but they made it easier because they asked school committee members that only things that if you worked with Jeff on a day-to-day -day basis, you would know. So they took some of that out. And then Desi changed it last year. A Masco, one of the two, changed it last year. And we were never notified, so we went by the old evaluation. So we continued on with that. Next year's evaluation is going to be different than okay. this year's evaluation. It's going to be, as the last person's comment said, it's going to have to have some self-assessments from it's going to have to have staff input and a bunch of things. So it is going to change again, but it's going to be a different document. We went by the old document. Okay, thank you. As, as you've probably seen in some of the confusion about the assessment methodology. I'm familiar. Do somebody else that just asked? Mr. Boyce. Yeah, I often think the process with the superintendent evaluation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the invention of the guillotine and root canal probably all came at the same time. <laughs> um, I, I've never seen a process where you're almost putting like the superintendent on his toes and you, you probably, you went and selected the best person. And Jeff, that's what you are. You're the best person. Don't let anyone fool you. Don't let anyone kid you. You've just done tremendous for us. And, and there's no way you can just say that on paper. It, comes from the heart and, and I bet you every single one of us in this room and much further out from this room feel the same damn way because what a heck of a year. And you probably didn't need, even need to be reminded of all that stuff. But man, believe me, I, I so appreciate it and I know everyone else does. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. Anyone else? Can I make okay. a comment? Can, can I make a comment on my event? Yes, yes, go ahead. <laughs> so I just want to thank the committee. I mean, give me feedback. I'm okay with feedback. I'm okay with you saying this is where you want to be. Last year was hard. To say it was hard personally and professionally, it was hard. So I want to start this year, <clears throat> excuse me, better. Um, I look forward to a good year that's different. I have a hell of a team. They, they bleed black and red. They want our kids to be successful. And you folks are part of that team. So if, if you want us to move in a direction, I will support that and I will work hard to make sure we go there. I, I'll be very, I, I'm so tired of talking about budget. I, I can't stand it anymore. I want to talk about kids. I, I know we need money. I know that, but we need to get forward bickering between the two communities about dollars and cents and, and every nickel we will spend we've been very frugal in how we spend and we need to start talking about program and where we want to be in five years we're getting a middle school that's uh, I, I i'm so excited to build that as we talk about where we can be in five years how how this 
from those evaluations what we can do to change education in the remote world if we have to do that and how we can better ourselves. So I encourage the feedback. I, I thank you for the, the, all of the words. The, the words, they, they were personal. Uh, and I want to, you know, I work hard for this district. I love this district. And the people around me do the same. They're working 40 hours a day, it seems. They don't go home. This one over here hasn't gone home in, in, in a month. People are working around the clock, and I just want the committee to know that everything we do is for the kids and for the, for the taxpayers and for the community because we love our job. We really do. Um, there's no place, even though we, we met as a school, I love you all, but we met every week since February on a Zoom to talk about assessment. We finally got that done because we were able to dialogue that through. And the two communities came together, and I never was more excited to be somewhere that on July 27th and July 29th, when the community stood up and said, we want this for our school. Um, it was personal for me, it was, it was growth for us, and I'm really excited to move us forward uh, with your support, so thank you. Well, Jeff, there was many times you and I had discussions and, and we talked about being a new superintendent and having to face big budgetary issues, an unprecedented COVID-19, in, in all of what's going on with scheduling. Hopefully all of that is behind you and you can look to this illustrious career in front of you and you yeah. won't have any of this. And I think we're all praying for no COVID-19 yeah. to have us be around. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, appreciate it. John Tuffy, you have a date report? I want to talk about So right after the superintendent said, I'm tired of talking about budget, <laughs> I'm here to talk about the budget. Well, he said him. <laughs> and he's leaving, so there you go. Actually, I'm not here to talk very long about budget. I, in your packet, you got a copy of the year-to-date report that covers uh, July and August for this fiscal year. Uh, my opinion is that it's way too early in the fiscal year to draw any conclusions from that report um, for a couple of reasons. One is this is a very different kind of year, and I think we all know that how we originally appropriated money is going to have to change as time goes on, and we'll be talking about that in some future meetings. Uh, because school is so late, we really don't have the same spending pattern that you'd expect because we're starting so much later. And frankly, with all the change that we're dealing with, um, the ink is still wet on some of the appointment letters for some teachers and paraprofessionals. And so we haven't been able to do a new salary table that would look at what did we budget for people and what's the, what's the reality. So next month when we talk about this, we'll be able to talk about some of those things and I think it'll make a lot more sense. What I can tell you is for the first two months of the year, we spent about 11.8% of our budget. That's about 1% less than we spent at this point last year. So in terms of, of spend rate, it, it certainly makes some sense. It seems to be going okay. Um, that's really all I can say about the expense part of the budget. I think the revenue part is still up in the air. Um, we know that the state hasn't passed a budget. We have, I think, a floor for Chapter 70, whether it's going to go up from where the, where the latest information that, was, um, that came out just last month We'll find out. Um, and then some of the programs that are oh so important for our budget haven't been voted yet. And that in particular includes um, Circuit Breaker. Um, we filed our claim like I think every other school district in the state has. We haven't seen the numbers come back yet. We don't know what that's gonna be. Um, tr regional transportation is a number we care about. We haven't seen that yet. And so there's still some holes that we have to deal with. Questions, anyone? Good. Dawn? Oh. Do you have a running total on our expenses we'll be submitting to Whitman and Hanson for the uh, CARES Act? We have, we, we, we're, in fact, we're working to get, that, to get that reimbursement request in in the next week or so. Okay. Um, we've got a time, time plane to deal with it. So yes, we do have a number. Um, we're keeping it separately in, <coughs> excuse me, in, a, in what you'd almost consider a revolving account. Okay. So it's, it's out of our regular budget and it's gonna be treated as a grant reimbursement. And I don't have that number with me right now. Okay. Um, we don't have all the invoices yet. One of the things that 
one of the more expensive programs that we're dealing with is is the ionization um, equipment that's being used for air quality purposes. As Ernie mentioned, we earlier in a meeting, um, we have received a lot of that equipment, but not all of that equipment yet. And in some cases, we've received equipment, but we haven't seen bills yet. So that's all coming together quickly. Right. I understand that the Plymouth County Commissioner is asking for towns to submit for those funds by October 1st now, when originally we understood we had till the end of the year, but they're looking to collect those. So I know it's, you know, an, again, the impossible to do. Well, I think this is going to be maybe a little more possible, but we're certainly going to meet that deadline. Last, last Thursday, I had a conversation with the town manager, town administrator for the town of Whitman, who told me about that information. And so we have started to gather it together. And again, we were keeping sort of a separate list of it. Um, we've started to fill out the paperwork for it. It requires copies of invoices, copies of purchase orders. We've grabbed that as well. Um, and so we're in a pretty good position to be able to submit. The original grant um, was going to deal with expenses that ran through December 30th. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what the commissioners are doing, so I really can't comment about how those appropriations or allocations are going to be dealt with. Okay. Anyone else? The only other thing I will mention, and that is the actual closeout of fiscal year 20. Um, as I mentioned at our last meeting, um, we will actually start the formal process of the closeout on September 10th, and tomorrow is that day. So tomorrow we'll start the closeout. That really means uh, switching over from closing out the 20 budget, uh, fully opening the 21 budget, um, doing reversions for any um, uh, open POs that we still have that we think may be an error um, and bringing that money back in, um, encumbering funds for, for things that were ordered and we hadn't quite gotten bills yet for them, those sorts of things. So that's all part of the closeout process. Um, and at our next meeting, I will bring forward uh, a list of line item transfers and that's something that that we've done here traditionally over the years because we do have some surpluses in some accounts and some deficits in other accounts. Um, it doesn't really add anything to the budget or, but what it does do is, is make it legal for, for the way money was expended. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Tuffy. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Superintendent, yeah. I hope that wasn't too painful. That was good. Unfinished business, 2020-21 academic calendar updates. As you can see on the calendar that you have in your packet, it shows added professional Does anyone have any questions? We, ju we just moved all those professional development days to Wednesdays. Last year they were traditionally on the Fridays. These are our natural half days in our, in our cohorts. So we moved all of our half days for the year to those Wednesdays to make sure to accommodate parents. We didn't want additional half days that parents had to try to provide childcare. Dan? No, um, so every Wednesday is a professional day, half day? At the so bottom. every every day, every Wednesday is a half school day, yeah. virtually, and for the students that are uh, our high needs students, the rest of those days, since the hybrid is, is modifying teaching, we're using the Wednesdays for PLC time, special education meetings, and throwing in more professional development for remote learning for teachers. And Go on. And you have Friday, February 5th as a professional development? I hope. Oh. It should be Wednesday, February 3rd. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. My mistake. Yeah, Anyone mistake. else? Uh, what about the Wednesdays that are not? Uh, grayed out here. What what about? Are those those are still half days? They're still half days, according to the hybrid model that we presented at the school committee. Every Wednesday, the it's students just will not have, a PD have, day. They're not, not no not PD days, but we specifically said with with the association these will be those PD days. So we just moved all those Fridays that we used to have yep. the uh, the contracted PD days to those Wednesdays, and wanted committee to know that and parents to know that as well. Anyone else? Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. You be looking for a motion to? It's not a vote. We're going to have to vote. We, I think, don't we have to? We're going to have to vote this to approve it as amended. Michelle. Yes, sir. 
You want us to vote to, uh, to change this? I don't see any vote here. You can go to approve it, and then I can post it online so everybody can have it. I'll entertain a motion to change the calendar as amended. So moved. Division six. Discussion? <laughs> right. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. We already did the MOU. Donation acceptance. These are pretty easy ones. We'll take it. Whitman Hanson Regional School District. Social Veterans Association is a 501c3 tax exempt organization working to empower and assist veterans in need in the South Shore area. We work closely with local veterans agents, veterans families, and veterans homeless shelters in the Brockton VA Hospital to provide financial assistance and services to improve the lives of local veterans in need. At the request of a local veteran, the Social Veterans Assistance Organization would like to donate a solar powered light for the flagpole at the Indian Head School. The flag is right outside of Memorial Hall at the Indian Head School and the veteran suggested a light so the flag can be flown all night. Our organization has been in touch with Ernie Sandlin to coordinate this effort. At the request of Mr. Sandlin, we also contacted Bob Hayes. Mr. Hayes requested that we write a letter to the school committee to get this donation approved. And entertain him. Thank you sincerely, Mr. David Andrews, Treasurer, South Shore Veterans Association. I'd entertain a motion to accept. Moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. I have some surplus requests from various departments, so I'm going to do them. If you don't mind, I. I'll do them blanket if you want. It's all. You can do a blanket. For okay. okay. From Chris Jones to Mr. Simonak, the following mass textbooks are no longer needed, used by the Whitman Hanson High School Math Department. I would like to declare these as obsolete. Fundamentals of Precalculus, 29 books. Trigonometry, 215 books. The Basic Practice of Statistics, 88 books. Amasco's AP Statistics, 38 books. Thank you, Christopher Jones. Principal. Attention, Mr. Simonak, the following books are no longer being used by the district as the course which we are being used is no longer often in our program of studies. I would like to declare these materials as surplus. These books are taking up space would be better used for other resources. Text, Office 2007, Introductory Concepts and Techniques, Shelley Cashman, 47 copies, copyright March 2009. Textbook, Office 2007, Advanced Concepts, and techniques. Shelley Cashman, 16 copies. August 2007 is the date. Thank you. Kristen Thomas, World Language and Business Department Chair, Whitman Hanson Regional School District. George Farrow <coughs> from Corin Mayette. Hello. Christine, <coughs> Christina Yakovonis has gone through the Duval Library Connection collection and weeded out books that met the following criteria. Last date checked out, age of the book, condition of the book. Better World Books accepts donation of all books regardless of their age and condition. They are a book resale company that donates one book for every book sold and there are no service fees, sign up or monthly fees. Unfortunately, they do not have to pick up the books in our area but they do have a donation box in Shaw's Plaza in Hanover. We would need to make pickup arrangements in order to get them there. Below is a link of the complete company's fre frequently asked questions. Once you give your approval, I will speak with Ernie about moving the boxes. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd entertain a motion to declare everything surplus that I just read to you that was in your packet. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Great. Jeff, just to, I go by the Hanover place she's talking about. Mm -hmm. If we can't get anybody, just tell me. I'm always driving the truck. I'll, I'll gladly drop them off. I go by there. Thumbs up. That's how I go to the highway. All right. Facility sub. <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry. Subcommittee report. Uh -huh. Okay. We uh, did do a walkthrough, and then we uh, had a meeting this evening. Uh, first on the walkthrough, I don't know if Jeff wants to give the synopsis or not, but uh, the one thing I would want to add was in each and every building, uh, it was uh, stated very bluntly how helpful and wonderful Ernie and the facility staff were in uh, their assistance in getting the buildings ready, cleaned, painted, uh, anything else that needed to be done, moved furniture, uh, helped clean out classrooms, etc. 
just it was a recurring theme. Everyone was thanking uh, Ernie and his staff and commending them on a job well done. So I just wanted to make sure I brought that up. I, thanks, Fred. I think we covered a little bit in the opening. Ernie, these guys were great. The building principals were great, moving things out. Teachers were great, moving things out. There was a lot of manpower. People are going to be bulked up this year because we moved a lot of furniture. So, got their exercise in. Okay, and uh, just as a brief synopsis, we went over the matrix, uh, which will be uh, distributed <coughs> to the whole committee, I'm sure, in the very near future. Uh, we're also going to develop a technology matrix uh, so that we can deliver that to both towns uh, so that we can decide what ro road or path we're going to be taking uh, to give a complete uh, picture of our technology needs and uh, the best way to take the bite at the apple, whether we want to eat the apple all at once or in little slices, so to speak. Uh, other than that, I think everything was non-eventful, other than some of the technology that we've installed, such as the iWave ionization systems uh, that we had already discussed earlier. So. Questions? Okay, thank you. The policy subcommittee committee needs to needs come up to with a meeting date. Yep. Do you have anything, Jeff, that you would suggest? I mean, we're, once once next week, once we get in, I don't know what, what a good time for the committee to meet, if it's after four, if it's at night, if it's during the day, I'm flexible. We can even do a Zoom if we had to do something like that because of people's hours. Uh, but I think it's, we just need to meet and get some of these things done. Uh, we had to cancel our last one, so I'm just looking for the committee to set a date. Would you set a date and contact the committee members? I could do that. I, I don't know, is there a preference? Four o'clock, five o'clock, is that good for folks? Okay. I know people are back to work in person, out person, you know, so. Five o'clock work? Five o'clock work for a policy subcommittee, we can do that. Five, that's good. Okay. I'll All notify right. you. Superintendent will be in touch. Just before we move past that, I would, I would ask the committee, I, I never like asking for another meeting, but I'd like to have the committee meet on September 30th. Um, our next meeting scheduled for October 14th, but I'd like to set it for the 30th to really focus in on the strategic plan and, and especially the engagement piece we talked about. Uh, I don't want to, and then I would be able to give the committee also an update on how school opened. I think five weeks is just a long period. Um, that meeting will have a direct focus on on our goals here and on, on the strategic plan and the, what we talked about with engagement. So I would like to, we spoke about that at the last meeting, really trying to focus in and have a conversation on where we want to go. I'll give a brief update on, on opening. Um, Mr. Tuffy will give a brief update on the budget and then we can really drill down into, into where we want to be. So I know it's not on the calendar, but when Michelle and I were looking at that and the 14th is, is so long, it's far away. Uh, I want to be able to move it forward. So the 30th is, is the date that I'd ask for the next school committee meeting. Also, Jeff, if you remember correctly, we talked about community engagement and taking the bull by the horns while yep. we have, have this going on. So that was the homework of the committee to come up with some questions and some thought processes on how we are going to do this. So keep that in what your thoughts are going to be because it's happening on September 30th. And also, as long as we can stay under the number of people, it was suggested maybe we get the student advisory yep. involved, and maybe they've got some, some young ideas to come up with. Because so, there's no question that we, uh, going back, quickly recapping both town meetings with certainly almost the biggest in history of both towns, so we might as well take advantage of that momentum. So my, my plan is for the October meeting to have the students back um, once they transition in, once council gets back together, and then having Dr. Jones and myself formulate that student engagement committee or, or by superintendent's council, and then we're gonna tr try to start inviting students. We're still in the, under the 25 person max, so we still have to make sure uh, of our numbers, and that's why we're still not in a public meeting, but we can ask folks to be here. And I think that giving Chris an opportunity and the high school kids an opportunity to come back for a month, get themselves self, uh, matriculated into their routine, we're gonna get more kids here. And, and as I spoke before, I'd love to get more students and more student opportunity about wh what they wanna see us do as a committee and as an administration. Also, it seems as, uh and it's been mentioned to me, and it's true, the, com the committee meetings have been running three, three and a half, four hours. I know a lot of that has had to do with 
Jeff and George reporting and making sure they're concise on exactly what's going on with school where we've had all these changes. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jeff, for all that. You know, it, it's been stressful. So we may end up having some extra school committee members. I mean, extra school committee meetings is what I'm just briefing you on a little bit. Jeff happened to come up with the 30th. If it starts to get bogged down, if it starts to get bogged down, we will be having a couple meetings a month, maybe if needed. But I'm just letting you know. David. Well, I was just wondering, could we amend a district calendar and have school committee meetings biweekly? Would that be something anyone else is open to? We usually meet as needed. We try to get the work done. Most school committee meetings run an hour and a half to two hours. That's why I'm saying if we start getting bogged down, we'll go unless this committee wants to vote to meet bi-monthly. Plus, we're, Dan? we're going to be getting negotiations too. That's going to take a lot of man hours for people too. So you know, I get I, the time. I agree. Chris, then Fred. So just as a, as a, uh, as a requirement, we don't have to publish all the school community, right. right? So we could still determine. Absolutely. I mean, did that, right? Just did that. Yep. I yeah. Think yep. No, I see where you're coming from. Every just have it there. Yep. God knows when to when. Uh, earlier this year when we were dealing with <laughs> issues. Um, but what, I guess my question would be for the 30th, my mm -hmm. ask would be maybe a week in advance. Whatever homework you want to give us, if you could give us maybe at least a week. If, sure. Hey, this is what yeah. you think of a strategic plan. Think about the following. Think about these things so that when we come to the meeting, we're all prepared to awesome. go. Mm -hmm. um, and then that may facilitate. If we're all prepared for meetings, then hopefully we can spend a little less time because we've all done our homework in advance. So sure. Okay. Awesome. Fred. Uh, two things. Uh, one, if uh, you could on the spot next Tuesday night uh, when we have a joint meeting, if you could give a one minute to the both towns uh, just as a synopsis of school opening, uh, they'd probably appreciate it. Uh, okay. Just thinking of that. I haven't uh, seen the agenda, so I don't know if that would be possible or not. So I, I sure uh, school will be open that first day. So yeah. absolutely, yeah. whatever, whatever, whoever's sharing the meeting, uh, I, I'm amenable to. Yeah. I think it's uh, I don't know I don't even know who's chairing. I think it's out of Whitman, the chair. Uh, number two, insurance subcommittee. I would okay. like to see us if we could uh, schedule a meeting, get together, okay. uh, so that we can. Uh, you know start looking at all our policies and right. whatnot and at, at the probably october meeting we're going to have to form a negotiation subcommittee as well yep. to start ongoing negotiations with the associations and for anyone that may be watching that wants to be community engagement i know it's difficult you cannot come to the meetings you can email us go to the whitman hanson regional school district all of our emails are there you can email us or you can send the emails to michelle or you can send the emails to jeff uh, you can send the emails to George, and we'll take all of the input, try to categorize it, and see if we can't come up with a better way of doing things as we move forward. Having said that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Meetings folks. adjourned. Thank you.